Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. Uh, for those that stopped by on Saturday for the live stream for my big old 40th birthday, I thank you all for stopping by and enjoying the old stream. Uh, if you did miss the stream, you might want to check that out. We uh, we did a few things. Uh, we made a little bit of progress. We, As you can see, we built our flyer. This is actually not the first flyer I've had. And I've had my first fatality in the name of science. If you didn't actually catch a screen, another stream, uh, you'll find a link in the descri description below. You'll be able to go check it out. Uh, I'll give you a minute to go check that out if you want. Uh, more than you, it is a long stream. It was about six and a half hours or something. So you go ahead and do that, and uh, yeah, and uh, come back, and we'll continue our little journey here. So, yes, yes, uh, needless to say, as you can see by the, the green stuff falling from the ground, uh, yeah, I decided to do something in the name of science, do a little bit of testing to see what this was all about, and needless to say, I found out the hard way. Uh, needless to say, my new craft here, I don't know if you can actually see it, but I do have a thermal regulator on here, and uh, that's because of my fatality. Uh, needless to say, the lava fields are a little more harsher than what they used to be. Ooh. Thunderstorm, just in time. Uh, but we did make some progress. We got everything pretty much unlocked. The only thing I haven't actually found yet was the radar and the large container. But currently, I'm on my way to the big old SOS that we're trying to get to. And we're going to go ahead and check this out before we go back to base and start doing some building because we have a whole bunch of fun toys to play with and lots of things to build and lots of interesting stuff to do. But anyways, this is going to be a bit of a flight for me. Uh, I'm not going to bother checking out these distress signals because, yeah, even though I'm Mark IV right now, I do have the Mark IV suit. I got my old suit and other goodies. Uh, oh, that's the wrong button. Uh, so, yeah, I've got the thermal regulator on here. As you can see, it's keeping me at 20, de 20 degrees, which isn't too bad. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to keep on flying because this is going to be a little while. I could probably use a couple more air blades on this thing, but eh, I'm not working on my ship right now. So, I will see you when we get there. All right, well, we're actually getting close to a distress signal here. Uh, fortunately, we're out of the lava fields. So, we'll go down here and have a look at it. At the same time, too, i got to turn that thermal regulator off to try to save a little bit of power. Because uh, right now... I have about two hours of flight left, and it doesn't seem to be much here except for just a broken down rover. So I'm going to lower down, uh, put a switchboard on the bottom, just to turn the stasis pod on and off, but I think I might leave the stasis chamber, I'm sorry, yes, uh, I know how to play this game. But we'll go ahead and just turn that off for now, that just saves the power, that's going to give me about four hours of flight. So that's good, but let's go check this out, see if there's anything here other than an unbelievable, unbelievable amount of goodillos, and they are literally everywhere. And there isn't too much here, but that doesn't matter. I mean, we can't disassemble everything, get some free parts out of this. May as well, right? Free parts are good parts. Uh, I gotta go ahead and reload the button, and we'll go check and see what's in the container there. I don't think there's gonna be much. I've got, like I said, I've got basically everything unlocked. As uh, so we can look in the block catalog here, I uh, got got the miners set up, we got the deuterium generators, we got all the armor rate. I think the only thing I'm missing is the radar, which I don't actually see on here. I think I have to scan that. And the large container, which at this point isn't that big of a deal, but it will be eventually. I'll just go ahead and clean up the rest of these little bits and pieces here. And let's go see what's actually in the box. More data pads. Uh, let's go ahead and read. Uh, Memories of Mars. I will never forget the day my father uncovered the derelict. We found this technology on Mars 10 years ago. Their DNA technology enabled incredible progress in genome sequencing. The negative mass generators enabled breakthrough in interstellar travel. It's like the creators anticipated we'd be at this stage of development. That excites me and scares me. However, there was no error. There there was no evidence Mars was their home planet. Is this their home world? Where are they? 
do do they even know we have arrived? Hmm, interesting. All right, then we'll go check the other one and see what this one says. There is no doubt these are the creations of the same race. Same language, same patterns, same materials. I've, re I've recovered part of the messages by creators, scientists. They contain references to many words they inhabit. Have it. They contain references to many worlds they inhabited. Some are given rather strange descriptions. Examples: uh, Cetus LS LHS 1140 clear, Wolf 1061 C shadow dark, Trappist 1 E neutral. Hypothesis: They must have been exploring these planets for colonization. What happened to them? Where did Wolf 1061 C go dark? Or why did Wolf 1061 C go dark? Hmm. Interesting. Alrighty. Well, that is that. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot more of those things I need to find, and I might actually have to turn that gener thermal regulator back on. So. I'm going to do that, and uh, I will continue on my journey, so I will see you when I get there. Alright, well, I'm still trucking along here. And I just noticed that we do seem to have some new plants around here. I don't think I've ever seen those before. That's interesting. Oh, wow. Well, there is a terrain generation if I've ever seen one. Let's actually go through, fly through the valley, just because we can. Uh, I have been coming across a lot of derelicts, a lot of distress signals. And right now, I'm not too, too worried about the storyline. Because, be, let's be honest, we all know why I'm here, right? Yes, and that's to build, and that's to be the BC that I am. That's because we have powered blocks, and there's things I like to build, there's builds I like to revisit and rebuild, and hopefully things will actually start working out much better. You know, a couple of things I thought about redoing is one of them just happens to be the pinball table. Come on, we all rec remember the pinball table, right? The desert nomads. Uh, you know, I also like to even look at possibly getting walkers, getting another walker going just because, just because I can, right? And I wouldn't be a mad scientist if I didn't build some giant contraption that moves and walks on its own. Uh, I have been trying to think of different ways I can use my newfound toys. Not only the key bindings, but the powered blocks, uh, the rotors and the hinges. Because, uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be fun stuff. What is that? Wow. You know they've changed the game a lot when I'm saying, what's that? That's new. I've never seen that before. But I like this. This is a nice canyon. Although, mind you, this is a bit of a flight, and I kind of regret having the max planet size now. We still have a little ways to go. We're not too bad, but I think just to make things go a little smoother, I might have to get up into the wild blue yonder and hopefully not crash into the cliffside while I'm on my way up. Oh, that's close. Um, what would be nice is if uh, the hard-working devs over there at Crane Ball Studios, if they could add a second temperature gauge. Wow, it's like a bunking Bronco some days. A sec second temperature gauge, like we have the temperature down at the bottom left there with, uh, with my vitals. Uh, it's telling me the temperature that I'm feeling, and that's because i got the thermal regulator turned on right now. It'd be nice if they had a, a body temperature, like the 20 degrees Celsius, and an external temperature. So we know when we can turn the thermal regulator off, because this thing does use a little bit of power. I am currently maxed out at, what, 47%, and as you can see, 2 hours and 4 minutes. Now, if I turn the regulator and the stasis chamber off, it goes down to about 22%, I get about 4 hours. So that's a lot better, and it's looking like we might be able to do it. I really should put a terminal on this thing too, and uh, another set of air blades and legs and things that fold and shoot railguns and all that kind of fun stuff. But 
Anyway, uh, let's actually see how far, we're, how much further we got. Oh, we're not too bad. We've gone a long way though. Come a lot. Found a lot of distress signals. Uh, needless to say, trying to find all the wrecks and all the distress signals could take some time. Uh, I admit my flyer could use a little more power, but that's fine. That's a weird looking tree. Yes, I'm going to be seeing a lot. I've been seeing a lot of new foliage. So that is interesting. But anyways, I will continue the journey and I will return when we get there. Alright, we're getting close. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is I'm picking up a lot of distress signals around here. So I've been uh, popping in on the odd one, just doing a bit of a flyby, see if there's anything interesting. And I haven't found too much, to be honest. I've been finding, like, base remnants and bits of old rover and stuff like that. But maybe, maybe one of these might actually have something interesting. Or something I haven't seen before. Or I don't have. And this one. What do we have here? Oh, that's another rover. Uh, let's look into the journal, too. Apparently, i got to find 40 of these things. So there is a bit of a story to go with this whole thing. Uh, what we'll probably do is, uh, well, what I'm going to do is after this episode on my way back, I'm going to go back and I'm going to stop at pretty much every single one of these. And yes, there's a lot of them. That just goes to show you how far I've gone. That's where home is, right there. All the way back there. So, well, uh, like I said, I'll end up doing that off camera and... Uh, probably won't find anything too interesting but at least I'll start collecting these data pads and maybe we'll have, but when I come back with next episode I'll have a story to tell us maybe but anyway so uh, we are still trucking along here uh, I turned the thermal regulator off a long time ago just because uh, one I want to need to save some fuel and two I don't actually need it right now uh, I would like to put some extra air blades on here but unfortunately, I am short on uh, SC Electronics. I have two, and I need s eight of them to get two more air blades on there. If I get two more air blades on here, then definitely we'll be flying a lot faster. And hopefully, the increased speed will uh, compensate for the extra power drain. Just because I don't have that much deuterium on me, and I want to make sure I can actually get home. But we are coming up to the, fruit, the next one here. I don't know where it is. Should actually be below me, I believe. Oh, it's down here. That's another one of those tanks. And another wing part by the looks of it. As far as I can tell, this whole colony ship with the 10,000 pods, it looks like it literally exploded all over the map. That's what it looked like anyways. This is a nice area, I gotta admit. You know, I really like what they've done with train generation. You can clearly tell it has changed. Um, I am in the experimental build, in case you're wondering, which means I'm in currently in 1.0.5.3, which has an updated Unity, and it does seem to be working pretty pretty good. And again, this is another another base. It's got a greenhouse, walls. And how come everything's white? Like, we got color in the game now. Why isn't everything colored? I have no idea, but we have a little ways to go. I actually have to go this way. So I'm going to keep on trucking. We should be there fairly shortly. So I'm going to do a cut, and I'll bring you back when we get there. What's this? Another monument. We're going to have to go and scan that. Uh, also, too, there have been b some tips get thrown my way. Uh, one of them just happens to be about not having not having to have your multi-tool on the hotbar, so it is no longer on there. Yes, I am using T, t to switch back and forth to it. Uh, I haven't hotkeyed the scanner yet, so I mean, I'm going to leave that on the on the, on the hotbar just because. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're going to be there in just a minute, so I'm going to do a quick cut here, and I'll bring you back when we're actually at the monument. We'll scan it and see what we get. And we have arrived. And it looks like the one I've already scanned before, which is, which is fine. It doesn't matter. Um, but let's go down and 
scan it because I think I actually have to scan all ten monuments. As far as I know, from what I remember, we're gonna lower down here and I just park it after the wave stop. Okay. So I gotta get my scanner back on the hot bar. Uh, like I said, I probably probably could hotkey it, but I'm not too worried about it. So let's scan away. All right, numerous types. There are several types of alien structures on this planet. The enormous monuments possibly serve as an interplanetary transport system. There are also scientific buildings that were mainly used by creators as research, data storage, and communication facilities, suggesting pre previous physical presence of creators. Hmm. Interesting. So I can't scan that. I can't scan that. But I can open this. Again, another one of those crystals. And... Extraterrestrial civilian notes. We are entering the world and minds of a superior life form. I wonder what this language sounds like in its spoken form. They would have never have to speak. They would. Oh, they wouldn't even have to speak. They wouldn't even have to be a they. However, they must have been at least remotely similar to us. Intelligent organic forms operating with complex technologies have to understand certain concepts. They use mathematics, geometry. They use mathematics, geometry. Their language has ha has complicated but, compre but comprehensible systems of grammar and syntax, reflecting the way the view reflecting the way the view the world. Yeah, it sounds a little odd to me. Which is also partly determined by the technology they use. They must have senses, sight, touch, limbs to operate this technology and interact with the world. Maybe it's us. Who knows? Anyway, uh, back to the flyer, which is flying on the ground. Uh, we are also very, very close to the SOS. So let us go see what we got. And go from there. Uh, it is going to take a minute, so I'll be back in just a second. Okay, we're down to the final kilometer. Uh, it is rain, it is dark, but we'll, do, we'll manage. Uh, there is, does happen to be, I think I mentioned already, another monument there, and there's also an alien wreck. So we're, we're going to have to go check all this fun stuff out, but we are coming up to the SOS in about half a click. And I see something. What is that? Actually, what is that? Oh, this could be interesting. It's a shame it's rain. Oh wow, is this like a a settlement or something? Oh my god, it's like a space elevator. Cool. What do we have here? I apologize for it being dark. I cannot control the weather. Uh, certainly not in this version of the game. Let's try not to touch these. In fact, oh, that is new. Let's actually hop out and scan it, shall we? Can I scan it? No. Open. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. If I haven't seen it, it's new to me. Let's see what else I can find here. I probably should put some lights on this thing. Yeah. This is actually the first time I've actually seen this. I have absolutely no idea what this is. I have not watched any of the videos. I haven't seen any spoilers. Uh, one thing I will do is be careful not to touch the beams because who knows what's going to happen. This is very cool. All right, let's uh, hit the right button so we get out. So that's just another one of these. And again, I don't think there's anything I could, I could do. I think I probably have to make those crystals or something for it. And there is a, some sort of structure here. And the rain stopped just in time. So let us investigate, shall we? Without taking down it, without taking out a tree. Oh, I found the large container. Oh, 
and I can't fly for some reason. Found the large container, and I found the scanner. Ooh. All right, I want to land this thing and try to save my fuel. And I don't think anything's actually going to cause any problems here. Turn it out of there, and get that hover mode on. We'll just switch that. I said, uh, let's just switch that off, not actually enter the stasis chamber. It's all good. No, it's just conveyors. I'm not too worried about conveyors. What do we have over here? We have just a rover stuck in the mud, as per usual. But there's a large container. Cool. Hee <laughs> hee, there's one. And then I saw you. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, need, a, need another battery. But I have the scanner now. Cool. Which means, or the radar, which means I can actually start scanning the world now. But let's go inside and have a look, shall we? And get back onto solid ground. Anything else I can scan? No. What is that? Oh, compact med bay. Okay. Nothing here to scan. That is a food and drink machine. Stasis chambers. I'll take the batteries. Survivor's date pad. This planet, it's not really a planet. I mean, it's not old enough to have such uh, variability and biodiversity. I say, they I say the creators terraformed an asteroid and later seeded it with all the necessary elements and some kind of artificial biomass. They designed life suited for specific environments, but there's something disturbing about the whole process. If it was meant to emulate certain environments, it's obviously got out of hand. I don't think the creators made, mistake of, made mistakes of that kind. So what really happened here? Your guess is as good as mine. So we'll read the next one. This technology is more advanced than the Mars artifacts. Not even Vic is able to work out all the details. I'm also getting curious about the nature of this place. I thought the Mars evacuation site was connected to their home world, or at least core systems. I, didn't, I do not think that this is the case. Some of their messages convey, un, unease, fear of the, convey unease, fear of this place. And there is there, there's that mysterious enemy symbol. This might explain the absence of crea creator scientists. Either they fled or became victims of, of some attack or event. Whatever happened, we missed it. And I hope I miss it too, because I'm not really <laughs> prepared for that. Oh, water. And we got some more data pads. I can't sleep. It's quiet. So damn quiet here. After years on terraforming stations, you get used to all the fuss, engines humming, metal screeching, people yelling. But here, mild breeze and raindrops drumming on the trees. Amidst all the silence, I feel observed. I guess it's just paranoia, I guess. Tomorrow, I'll try to collect as many samples as possible. I need to keep myself occupied, occupied before the quiet eats my brain away. And yes, you ever hear the, you ever hear the term silence killed? Or the silence is deafening? I guess that doesn't actually apply here, but you know what I mean. All right, aliens. I thought I, thought I was delusional due to the continuous lack of sleep. But I found a bizarre structure. When I got closer, I felt surrounded by energy. It was drawing me inside, inviting me. I felt nauseous and wanted to turn away, but it, it wouldn't let me. I just cannot explain it. And there was the outlandish, intense buzzing sound, just piercing through my skull. I'm gonna throw up. What the hell is this place? All right, now it's starting to get me interested. All right, what else we have in here? Is this this it? It should be. Another floor, because I see a set of stairs outside. Out here, I think. Oh, yes. I know I could use my jetpack, but... Eh. God gave us feet for a reason. Oh, wow, that's actually a huge monument. Cool. And what do we have in here? Uh, we got that. Terminal, yada, yada, yada. Nothing in there. Nutrition capsules. Those. And more data pads. Noise. My sleep condition is getting worse. I'm sweating, shaking for hours, and I'm having these bizarre nightmares, like someone's speaking to me, but I cannot conceive what it means. Funny thing is, in the morning, I feel so calm and rested. 
Maybe I'm just dreaming about not sleeping. I am awake now, right? I mean, I have to be. The strange sound is following me everywhere. I think it's trying to tell me something. Maybe I should give it a name. How about Buzz? Works for me. Okay, the creators will not be coming back. This was not a regular scientific outpost. There is a security system surrounding this planet. Any ship or electronic device that comes to its vicinity is affected by atmospheric anomaly. Either they were trying to keep this place hidden or, or try to lure someone here. That also explains Terry's sudden disappearance and how our ship's electronics got fried on entry. But they must have had this firewall under control. Perhaps we can deactivate it. Cool. Alright, so that one's empty. Uh, I think that's going to be stuck on the screen. I have no idea. I don't need seeds. Uh, is there anything I can get rid of? Uh, my multi-tool. No. I'll get rid of a piece of carbon. Picked up polycrystal chassis. And more data pads. Thinking with portals. Judging by Galena's translations, the creators use portals to travel between the, the creators use portals to travel between their many worlds. The main portal system on this planet has been shut down because of some unexplicable tragic event. It seems they fought a losing battle with some mysterious enemy. Our only way out of here is annulling the quarantine, shutting down the atmospheric trap, and reactivating the portal. But something is missing. Thank you for interrupting me again. The fall. The Eridani scientists were not prey to an external force. They created a sophisticated biotechnology, some form of nanovirus that helped them in act achieving amazing progress. The nanovirus immunized, immunized itself from, pre -pro from reprogramming and became an emergent um, omnivorous Trojan horse that started a series of events that ruptured their society. It seems m seems many planets were afflicted, including this one. I'm going to go out. Okay, who's talking to me? Are those voices in my head again? I have no idea. Anyway, uh, I actually forgot what I was saying. And I, of course, I cannot fly through there. I don't know why I thought I could. I knew it was a window when I got here. And uh, that is that. So, now we go check that out. I don't know if there's any other buildings around here, but we shall find out. Let's go and check it out. Anything up here I need? Uh, or, sorry, anything up here I don't have. Probably could power that, but I'm not too worried about it. Now, is this going to kill me? And I've... This must be the main monument. Cool. I uh, couldn't, couldn't figure out what that was at first when I realized it was a teleport pad. Alright, let's uh, scan this bad boy. And... Oh. These interplanetary, por interplanetary portals are connected. Energetic traces can be tracked to a main powerful monument that could have been used to, as a way out of this planet. Human scientists have found a similar por portal on Mars, but have been unable to operate it. This main mo monument appears to be shut down for unknown reasons, possibly a quarantine or some other defense mechanism. More data required. Okay. More data. Let's look for more data. And what do we have in here? More crystals, another one of those, and more civilian notes. Brain behind. Oh, wow, this is a little bit of a long one. Creators must have a complex neurological, if they are indeed an organic species, structure to maintain high levels of abstraction, and so forth. The real mystery to me is their thinking, intentions, motivations. Why would they leave technology on Mars? My brother believed that there was this was that that was believed that was no. Sorry. 
My brother believed that was no coincidence, that they were connecting to us, observing, listening, waiting. We do not know, we do not know enough about their concept of time. They do not use forward and back or even lateral. might be due to their neurobiological constitution. Same goes with time. Technology allowed them to make jumps between systems, eliminating the possibility of sharing an, a unified time con conception. They, con they contextualize everything through shared events and experiences. Alas, specific dates are, dis are dissolved because of reality. Yet their communication seems omnipresent and a continuous flow of real-time data. Oh, fireflies. Uh, I am going to go out and say that I am starting to get a little confused with this story. I have no idea what's going on, but we are here. Uh, what else do we have here? We also have that alien wreck, so let's go check that out. We'll head back to the flyer before I lose it because I forgot to put a solar beacon on it. I always try to get in the habit of doing that because you never know I'm going to lose something and I forgot to see if there was anything in here. No. And as suggested many times, check my build vision because you never know what I'm going to find. And there is absolutely nothing in there. It's just a solar beacon and... Alright, well let's go check out the, um, the ship here. See what we have. Alright, turn build vision off so I can actually see what I'm doing. And it's just a couple hundred meters over this way. I have to say, this is actually cool. Jeez, I've never actually explored this game. Use you with me, it's so oh, mining, mass production, let's build. Okay, where is this thing? It is. Not what just came up on the radar, but it should be around here somewhere. There it is. Okay, let's have a look at this thing. Oh. <laughs> I hate to say it, that gave me a legitimate jump scare. I had absolutely no idea what happened, but we're going to go ahead and... Ooh, Xanite, Titanium, another one of those. Uh, do you mind? I'm busy. But I forgot to see what I actually had in here. Oh, yeah, I forgot I had supplies. Let's get some stuff in here, get some room. So we can take a bunch of goodies. Alright. Whoa. Don't mind me, Mr. Sherbel. I just want to come in here and take all these goodies. Whoa. Come on. And yes, I realize there's a take all button. I'm just not thinking right now. Okay. And I don't need to scan that. Oh, I can scan it. Cool. Let's do this before I get hurt here. Come on. I don't think I'm going to actually do anything else with this besides scan it. Energy wave. The quarantine procedure seems to be connected to a powerful energetic wave that decontaminates life forms attempting to escape. There are similarities in energetic signatures of defense mechanisms in this planetary ion, in the planetary ion ionosphere and energetic waves that damaged and needed stabilizing mechanics, thus activating emergency procedures that awoke you from the cryo sleep. It seems the main monument has been manipulated with and activated shortly before this event. Alright. Cool. So there's nothing for me to open here. And... So we have found the main monument. That is really cool. Only one thing left to do. Right, can we actually scan? Actually, where's my flyer? Where's my flyer? There it is. The Cerebral's garden it for me. Uh, thank you, sir. All right. Let's get away from these guys before uh, <laughs> before I have fatality number two. So let's go ahead and scan this this main monument, and we'll probably end up calling the episode after this. But 
Yeah, let's see what it gives us. I think I'm... I don't, can't remember if I tried to scan it or not. We shall find out. Okay, we have scanned it. Well, that is interesting. We have found the main monument. We have found a lot of story. All these different logs. Oh, wait, what's this? Uh, what happened? Actually, there's a lot of logs here. Okay, biochemist manicore. Annie, if you find this, follow in my footsteps. I know you made it to the pods. There were others, right? Captain Tamara, Minerov, Valerie. I don't think they made it. After the anomaly, they blew up the bridge to save the cargo. The atmospheric entry was pretty rough. I got some bruises and I think a couple of ribs broken. But hey, I'm alive. We need to figure something out. There's 10,000 people abandoned in the, uh, on the orbit. There should be 10,000 people abandoned in orbit. Anyway. Alright, next. First night. Nightfall. I can hear something sniffing around. Something big. Visibility is really poor at night and animals are becoming hostile. I don't intend to become a part of the menu a la carte. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to venture out to, to the wilderness. I have, I have water, some dried fruit, but that's not going to last for very long. Getting hungry. God, I never thought I'd say this, but I miss their cafeteria food. I seriously do. Congenia. Can't stop thinking of how many people died on that ship. Yes, we knew the risks, but no training can teach you what... Teach you what to do when your friends are begging for their goddamn mother. I mean, you have to save yourself, but how in the hell did we even get here? Isn't this all too convenient for comfort? A team of elite scientists with 10,000 people in stasis on a massive colonization ship that suddenly changed course without knowing why and crash landed on an alien planet swarming with life. People on Earth will think we just went off for the, the relay grid or something and then Kajinia will issue a nice, clean statement. Thank you for your service. Maynard has to be up to something big. Alright. Alright, now for Geoengineer Delgado. What happened? Oh man, there's something seriously wrong with, about the way we got here. We're on our way to Tau City, but Captain suddenly changed the course. Terry did a recon on a new, newly found magical planet and never came back. We had heavy, heavy interference and everything went crazy. But the way we got here, did Congenia know about this? And what the hell happened to Terry? Okay, that was number one. Number two. Searching for others. I finally found some escape pods. There were bodies, or what was left of them. One guy was missing both legs. The other body was burned beyond recognition. Is everybody dead? Am I alone in this? I cannot give up now. I'll look for other survivors and collect some samples as I go. If someone receives their signal, there should be a rescue mission coming in a couple of months. And if not, well, I don't want to think about that. Trouble with sleep. Okay, yeah, okay, so these are ones... I have read these already. Okay, I was actually wondering about this. So let's check out this mission information. Uh, mission information. Commercial terraforming vessel ended of Congenia Techno Technological Consortium. Try saying that ten times fast. <laughs> Goals. Recon and scanning of habitable exoplanets. Primary estimation of mining and terraforming potential. Construction of research outposts. Material and logistics support of existing terraform projects. Crew. 37. Captain Ryu, Ryu Tamara. Tamura, sorry. Uh, Chief Technology Officer Amir Sare, Science Team Leader Etienne Manicourt, Security Arif Mezer, Cargo 10,000 Active Stasis, stasis Chambers. I apologize if I have read this already, but we're going to read it again, anyways. Destination Tau, Cent Tau City F and nearby moons. Estimate mission time. 1101-2087-03 to 03-31-2092. So about five years. Warning. Coordinates updated, coordinates updated on 1412-2087 by Congenia HQ, Mars International Hub. Ship will change course for 
Eridanus, awaiting further instructions authorized by Special Operations Division. And now for mission update. Oh, long read here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mission update. Commercial terraforming vessel. All right. Vessel Lenita. Update. My name is Joy and I am your AI advisor integrated with your suit. Oh, so the voice in her head is called Joy. How joyful. Here's a quick report of past events. You are the only successful awakened technician on board with the necessary qualifications to repair the damage stabilizers and preventing the ship's uncontrolled descent into the atmosphere. Main, stabilization gener main stabilizing generators are put out of commission by an energy wave of extraterrestrial origin. The epicenter of this wave is located directly on this planet's surface. According to the available records, the ship's propulsion system started deteriorating after it reached the planet's orbit and eventually sorry, all control over its movement was lost. Individual systems gradually failed and the integrity of the hull was damaged in the front of the section front in the front section of the ship. The last record from the black box indicates that the captain attempted an unsuccessful manual course correction. Then the captain separated the cargo and colonization parts of the ship to protect them from the Im imminent explosion of the bridge. I was unable to establish connection with the main computer. To receive the whole mission log, you will have to link the ship's main AI core manually. You were able to fix ship stabil stabilizers and prevent her destruction in the atmosphere, but due to the airlock failure, you were forced to leave the ship. Sorry, had to clear my throat there. Uh, the primary objective of Shipwreck Survivor is to survive in a new environment. This involves exploring the, exploring the area and securing the basic necessities. I have a feeling I should have read this already. <laughs> oh well, better late than never. The primary objective of Congenia employees is to try to complete the original mission and rescue the company's assets. Scan results. Cannot establish a connection with the ship's m Ships remains in orbit. The source of the interference probably comes from the planet's ionosphere. Number of external signals number of external signals in area affected. The scan shows that the detected signals are being broadcast on a frequency used by the crew of the Anita. A search of the area is recommended. Scanning details show that service, several signals are not man made. I recommend increased caution when exploring these sites. Okay, oh wow. There's a lot of logs. A lot of reading. So, let's... Let's... There we go. And... Doesn't seem to be too much else around here. But at least we did get part of the story going. I... Oops, sorry. I have absolutely no idea what I'm supposed to be doing with those things. I guess I gotta put some sort of crystal in there. I am not too sure, but I think this might be a good place to call the episode. We finally did some exploring. We found the main monument. This is actually the first time I've ever seen the main monument, which is always good. And we did some exploring, yes. Uh, we have come a very, a very, a very long way. Came halfway across the planet, and I'm actually, I was almost thinking it might have been quicker to go the other way, but apparently not. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working my way back. I'm gonna hit hit up all these all these uh, distress signals and see if there's anything I can find. I might just end up grabbing them everything for parts and what have you, and go from there. Oh wait, there is another ship. You know, what, let's go check that one out first, and then we'll call the episode here because I'm sure it's getting quite long because I've been reading and rambling and tripping over my tongue like I always do. So where are you? Over there. That is the one, right? No, it's not, actually. Is it? It's behind me. Of course it's behind me. Uh, it shows one down here, too. Where is this one? Uh, it wasn't that one. Unless that's showing up as a main monument. I am not too sure. 
But, anyways, I think this is a good place to call the episode here. Uh, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, it's certainly been an interesting experience for me. Not only have I flown halfway around the world, but I found this little beauty. Unbelievable. It's certainly not what I was expecting. I thought the main monument was going to be just like the monument. But with that, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Later.